Bruce Roberts down here at the field at Metropolitan Stadium, and if there is such a thing, it is pleasantly cold. The temperature is 9 degrees above. The wind's out of the northwest at 10 miles an hour, and the sun is shining brightly. As far as the condition of the field is concerned, Dick Erickson and his ground crew here have done a truly remarkable job. Immediately after last week's Viking Ram game, they covered the complete surface, including the end zones, with a two-inch thick fiberglass blanket. That, in turn, was covered by a tarp, and then blowers were brought in to see that the ground did not freeze. And as of right this, uh, at, as of this moment, you can see the flamethrowers in the background. They're working at it. So we have fairly ideal conditions. But by halftime, the ground might freeze. And some changes will have to be made. That's the situation as of this moment. We'll be ready for the start of today's NFL championship game between the Cleveland Browns and the Minnesota Vikings after this pause for station identification. The Minnesota Vikings and the Cleveland Browns battle for high stakes. For the winner, the NFL championship and a trip to the Super Bowl. Stay tuned for the action on CBS. CBS Television Sports presents the National Football League Championship. Brought to you by Standard Oil Division, American Oil Company, who reminds you that you expect more from Standard and you get it. And by New True Filter Cigarettes with or without menthol. And by Ford, who brings you better ideas for 1970. Paul, as far as the weather is concerned, we have sunshine. In case the sunshine should disappear here at Bloomington, Minnesota, the lights are turned on. The field, I think it's safe to say, to echo what Bruce Roberts said, is, it is, it is in as good a condition as it is possible to be at this time of year in this part of the country. Would you agree? I agree, Ray. I don't think we're going to see any snow today. I think it's going to remain very cold because of the lack of cloud cover. And there is a possibility the field might freeze about the half. And if it does, it might change the rush of that great front four of Minnesota. The officials for our game today, the referee is Tom Bell, the umpire Joe Connell, the headlinesman George Murphy, Jack Fetty is the line judge, Ralph Vandenberg the back judge, Fritz Graf the field judge. There are alternates here today as well, Bernie Ullman and Bruce Finlayson. So, we'll be ready for the start of today's game in just a moment. The Cleveland Browns defensive unit has been introduced, and as you will judge by the roar of this capacity crowd, or near so, the Minnesota Vikings offensive unit is being introduced. Mick Tinglehoff of Nebraska, Jim Ballone of Southern California, Milt Sunday of Minnesota, Brady Alderman from Detroit, Ron Yarry of Southern California have all been introduced. Michigan State's Gene Washington, the split end, tight end John Beasley. Washington from Michigan State, Beasley of California. Dave Osborne, number 41, you saw a moment ago from North Dakota. Bill Brown, the fullback from Illinois. John Henderson, the flanker from Michigan. And the quarterback, there's Henderson, number 80. And the quarterback, Joe Cap. Uh, I would say the calling out of his name evoked the uh, greatest bit of applause we have heard so far today. Head coach Blanton Collier of the Browns was introduced. Head coach Bud Grant of the Minnesota Vikings. 
The Cleveland Browns have won four National Football League championships. They have appeared in ten NFL championship games. In fact, they have appeared in three of the last five. Their last championship came in 1964. They were on the losing end in championship games in 1965 and in 1968. Joe Cap. I think that uh, over these last few weeks, Paul Chrisman, uh, our sports following public of this country has learned to know a lot about this young man. He does everything the wrong way. You know, as we said, all he does is win, and that's I'm sure that's getting a little tiresome to hear, but that's just the way he plays ball. He, uh, he apparently has a fine delivery here, but you see him in the ball game throwing with his right foot forward and his right foot sideways and every other way, but he gets the ball to the receivers, which is what counts, and he gets it there on time. Referee Tom Bell indicating the Minnesota Vikings have won the toss and have elected to receive. The temperature, we will repeat, is nine above zero. The wind is out of the northwest at 12 miles per hour. The playing field, and again, and again we will say it, the playing field as of right now is in good condition. Uh, a comparison with last week when the Vikings played the Los Angeles Rams here, snow actually had crept onto just the edges of the playing field, necessitating sideline markers of a red-like dust. Well, now the same red dust is being used today, but the snow is well away from either sideline. So uh, I don't think Paul will have any trouble in determining whether a player is in or out of bounds. We No, I don't think we will either, Ray. There's that red line shows up better than anything. And also, we remind you again, there are flags intermittently about every 10 yards along the field. And don't be surprised if you see one and a ball player rolls out of bounds, you might think automatically it is the goal line. It is not. There's a flag right there. And they're all along the sideline on both sides just in case of any tough weather they may need these things. The flag raising is being taken care of by a combined color guard from the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. The Viking band directed by Mr. Ralph Mendenhall will play the anthem. The singing here will be led by Mr. Charles Wood. So our players are at attention and we all join in the singing of our national anthem. So the Minnesota Vikings make their first appearance ever in a National Football League championship game. With the exception of nine first-year men, all of these Cleveland Browns were on the squad last year that lost in the championship game to the Baltimore Colts. Don Cockroft tees it up for Cleveland. Deep, number 40, Charlie West. Number 26, Clint Jones. So the talking and the writing are over. It's down to the playing. We're glad you're with us. The Browns and the Vikings for the National Football League Championship at Bloomington, Minnesota. Charlie West at the 8. To the 30. First man to meet him, Bill Andrews. As our game gets underway, we remind you, this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Cap sends Henderson 80 to the left, Washington 84 to the right. From the Viking 30, first and 10. Cap. 
intended for Henderson, broken down by Walt Sumner. You had a chance to see the Minnesota Vikings offensive unit, most of them at least. So right now, as the Vikings are second and 10 from their 30, let's set up the Cleveland defense for you. Up front for Cleveland, Gregory 81, Kanicki 69, Johnson 71, and Snydo 88. The three linebackers in the middle, Lindsey 51, flanked by Garlington 50 and Houston 82. Second and 10, Minnesota. Bill Brown, four yards, 34 yard line, Lindsey stopped him. And now the Brown deep men at the right corner. You saw him break down the first pass thrown, Walt Sumner, 29. At the left corner is 12 year veteran, number 40, Erich Barnes. Mike Howell, 34, and Ernie Kellerman, 24, round out the Cleveland secondary. For Minnesota, third down six from the Viking, 34. To the right, Henderson. To the left, Washington. Brown, first down. Linebacker Jim Houston made the tackle, but the Vikings have a first down. Take a little look at it now. This is a draw type play. See him wait for the ball to be brought back to him. That gives a trap man time to get out there and make his block. And here's the cut as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Just moves slightly to the outside. Good gainer. Result gain of nine. First and ten Vikings. Minnesota 43. To the wide side. The right is Henderson. For Washington. He was inbounds at the 24 yard line. We'll give you a uh, picture of this all alone. Now, watch him. Washington, you will see his feet are in, even though his body may not. As he leans, oh, he's still he's in all the way. It looked like his body was slightly out of bounds, but he did have both feet in. He had his. He caught the ball inbounds all the way as it turned out. So cap to Washington first down Cleveland 24 yard line gain 33 yards Washington left Henderson right. Brown. He's inside the 20. Mike Howell of the secondary. 34 Walter Johnson number 71 mainly responsible for stopping that play but the ball 18 and 19 yard line of Cleveland it is second down and four and a half our game is just underway as we look along the sideline at the Minnesota Vikings bench Washington left Henderson right Osborne. He's inside the 10. You know, that's the way Osborne has run the entire season. He's always got that second effort. Watch him now. He looks like he's stopped. There's a little cross puck move there. He's hit. Bang. Rolls. Keeps going. Watch how much more yardage he picks up after he was apparently stopped. There's some real effort. Sumner prevented a touchdown perhaps he was the last man it's first and goal at the Cleveland seven after three and a half minutes of play Henderson incomplete defending Erich Barnes now we got our first look at the elements the elements in this case end zone although they claim it is not frozen is, is apparently a little tougher than the playing field Henderson tried to do a little maneuver there started in the end and tried to cut quickly and go to the outside and he slipped a little bit he didn't get any ground on the defensive man at all they were both kind of skating around there as they ran through the end zone 
By the way, there was some doubt about footwear, but they are wearing regular football shoes. Second and goal at the Cleveland 7 for the Vikings. to give the ball to Bill Brown. Watch, it's a busted play. This is the best bust in the world, six points. They ran into each other. He's supposed to go off tackle, and the defense moved to take Brown. Instead, capped right up the middle, and you see what happened. Six points. Fred Cox with Kraus holding will try for the seventh point. A penalty marker is down. Offside, Cleveland, it's declined. The extra point stands at 7 0 Minnesota. We'll be back with the Vikings kickoff in just a moment. So the Vikings go 66 yards and score on a play that was not intended to be. A seven yard run by Cap. Cox kicks off. Deep are Morrison and Scott. Morrison just got his hands on it in the end zone for a touchback, but a Viking was there a split second after Morrison covered that ball. Touchback, Brown start from the Brown 20. 11.03 left first quarter, and the Vikings lead by 7 to nothing in their first NFL championship game ever. Starting for Cleveland in the backfield, Bill Nelson is the quarterback, number 16. Running backs are Kelly, 44, and Scott, 35. Kelly, four yards. Carl Eller, number 81 here, against Monty Clark, the right tackle. Eller bypasses is hit by two people still splits him makes the tackle but for a four yard gain. Second down six Cleveland Warfield 42 left Collins 86 to the right. Bill Nelson. Bo Scott. First down 38 yard line. Carl Eller made the tackle. Nelson during the regular season completed 54 percent of his passes. He threw 23 touchdown passes. I'd say in the latter part of the season particularly the last month we have seen more and more of that last type of play. It's like a screen. Two linemen get out there ahead of him, but it's just a quick swing pass to either side. First and 10 Cleveland at the Brown 38. Intended for Warren. He collided with linebacker Wally Hilgenberg. Lonnie Warwick was back there too. It was Warwick that ran into Morin as the pass reached Morin. Second down 10 Cleveland. 944 left first quarter. Vikings lead 7-0. Joe Cap ran seven yards for a touchdown. He intended that Bill Brown have the ball. It didn't work out that way. To the right, Collins. To the left, Warfield. Tight end Morin. Is on the left side. Bo Scott, 43 yard line. Alan Page made the tackle. Watch Hickerson now. We're going to show you this play again. I'm sorry. We're not coming back with this one. On Saturday, January 24th, CBS will bring you a nighttime special Harlem Globetrotters, The Road to Mexico. They always delight young and old alike. Meadowlook Lemon, the crown prince of basketball. Meadowlark will be there. That's the Harlem Globetrotters Road to Mexico, January 24 on CBS. Third down, five, Cleveland. Incomplete. Bo Scott, the intended receiver. 
Bill Nelson heads for the sidelines. As for Cleveland, it is fourth and five. 9.02 left to play. First quarter, Vikings lead 7 0. Charlie West, number 40. Bob Grimm, number 27, are the deep men. And for what it's worth, they're in a terrific sun field in this first quarter. The sun is directly behind the kicker. Cockroft punting from inside the 30. Fair catch, West, 24 yard line of Minnesota. With the score, the Vikings seven and the Browns nothing. Let's pause for a moment. <laughs> 